Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Lovely to see you all this afternoon. My name is Nick Hoodall. I am known as the Bard of Broadstairs. I don't know why I don't do those long ass poems. I do ones that even I can sometimes remember. They're short, sweet, and hopefully touch an aspect of your life that you'll relate to. To me, poetry either reminds us of something we've forgotten, shows us something we don't know about, or is just a cheap laugh based around easy puns. So, Somewhere in this, I hope you find something you want. What's especially exciting for me is, what have I got in common with Adele, Elvis Presley? I've got a residency. I'm actually here every day. Yeah, that's where it stops, obviously, although, <laughs> although Elvis is dead and some days so do I. The, um, it's amazing, six days. Who'd have thought there was a market for poetry? But there is poetry in everything we do. Everything we hear, everything we see, commercials, rhymes, it's all there. And uh, I'm gratified to see you here, especially those of you who've come back for the third day. Um, well, I'm assuming they haven't slept here all night. Well, a man just put two fingers up at me, suggesting it was two days, so either it was abuse or... I was, I was hallucinating the first day. It's the Churchill way. Oh, well, that's very... <laughs> the Winston Churchill way. Anybody heard of John Cooper Clark? Yeah. Right. Uh, vaguely acquainted with him and uh, his friend Martin Newell. And they were having dinner and talking about what makes a good poet. And they say, well, a good poet reads lots of poetry. But a really good poet deconstructs the poems and parodies them. So with that in mind, this is my homage, love song, or, or Mickey take, in the style of John Cooper Clark. Will you let me be your Johnny Clark? I want to be the dog that barks. Will be the voices in the dark, watching box sets off Paul Dark. Will you let me be your school caretaker, your Saturday night defibrillator? Which you will be the masticator. Could you be my blotting paper? Will you be forever home and call not text, it's called a phone. Expect to give the dog a bone, on your coffee I'll be the phone. Will you react favourably, put the bat on in boulangerie, read my poems out in threes, foreplay, horizontally. Will you love me like a horse, I've got the house brand special sauce, eat kimchi till my voice is hoarse, our loving will be coarse, of course. Will you be my final date? I am implying mortal mate. Don't delay, don't hesitate. Might not be bad, might not be great. Will you listen to me moan? On me she shat, that bird has flown. I want to pack my dripping phone in your sack of sushi rice. <laughs> Are there any cyclists in? I'm talking the cyclists do do the lycra. Right, okay. I, I know who you are. This is for you. This is called Lunchbox. <laughs> a peloton of cyclists, all bikes and extra chains and special pants with seats built in filled up the high speed train. They'd hurtled down from London, sharp stop before the sea, and now we're going home again with curry sauce for tea. Despite their cleats and studs and socks, that ride at times was hell. Now for relief, it's Bee Gee songs and gargling San Miguel. The bounce were chips and strava, camaraderie of men. Eased into lycra, little caps, it's dress-up time again. <laughs> um, anybody remember, because you can remember it now, it's officially nostalgia, the uh, Thanet Beer Festival? Yes. Right, yeah, God rest its soul. Um, I, I played in, uh, in the, that ukulele band, Gadzooks, there one year, and it was, some people had Vietnam, we had the Winter Gardens. You stand in front of 1,500 people who are committed body and soul to seeing how much beer they can drink. That is their sole objective. But in talking to some of the people, I came to understand that the reason they did is they thought, they believed, they hoped it would make them more attractive. <laughs> the jury's out at best. <laughs> He's knocking back another pint he doesn't want, an awful sight. He thinks that he will last the night he won't. That's what his friends know. Now his jokes are getting louder, hopes his friends have got some prouder. Really couldn't be more prouder as his bladder starts to blow. The room's now moving round him. Two more pints follow down his chin. The lights inside him getting dim. He won't be going yet, though. 
Oh, just one more. I'll get these. Oh, he might not go when he's a score or anything, but get some crisps. He drops his glass, falls on his ass, can't find his bus pass. I'm going home. <laughs> then in his chair, kebab in hair. He didn't pull, was just a dare, I didn't fancy her, no. At 3 a.m., like other men who think that when they're drunk they let the pain go, remember shouts, the knockabouts, and guts in doubt. He hates to get this low. He's reaching for another pint. Now, I come, from, I come from North East Essex, which when I was born was still a different place. And it had an odd regional accent, which is a bit like Suffolk, which has now almost entirely died out. Which means I got a, a fair amount of licence to try and recall a little bit of it in this poem, which is a, an homage to Martin Newell, who I spoke about earlier on. This is called, um, Found Him Dead with an Acrobat. <laughs> Twisted round her little finger, half a clown and part-time singer, High wire act, bit of a minger, ex stunt double for Corporal Klinger. Found him dead in an acrobat, diclofenac spread round flat, duvet bunch round plates of meat, fish for dinner, special treat. This is what the papers spat, found him dead with an acrobat. Hoping for a decent send off, garage flowers, hat in corf, skin on fire, heart of ice, try the rhubarb, really nice. <laughs> Elephant's ears, Dactari's trunk, gluten free, still got him drunk, no one knew but no one asked. Thought that he'd been played for laughs. Tried his best and failed at that. Ready reckoned, scored as twat. Didn't mean to hurt the cat. Found him dead with an acrobat. Found him dead with an acrobat. Went in first but last about. The dirty, rotten, stinking rat that found him dead with an acrobat. <laughs> Pam Ayres fans. You like this. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Pam Ayres, but there's something about her approach that winds some people up. So I, I try and pay tribute wherever I can. I was, um, I was driving, I think, near Stonehenge, as you do, one night, and this wild animal ran in front of the car, and my friend Helen said, was that a stoat? And I thought, ooh, what would Pam say? And in advance, no, I'm not doing Ernie by uh, Benny Hill. <laughs> oh my word, I said out loud when I was driving home. Is that a stoat? I saw a head standing in the road. I rather hope it wasn't, as I think I mowed it down. Might have been a fox, I suppose, but not in that part of town. Can't be helped, I'll clean the tires, there's not much else to do, as Mr. Stoat or Mrs. Stoat won't ever make the news. I expect that you are thinking now this is not one of her wittiest poems. There's no obvious gag or punchline coming and you think I'd best be going. <laughs> I wasn't being sweet and rustic enough, coming over cynical, blasé. There's more to life than my teeth and old man, but that stuff, it doesn't much pay. But here's to all the trivia that life is mostly made of when you don't look out for the big stuff like justice, peace and kindness, or in my case, a stoat. <laughs> People say, why do I write short poems? And I said, the way I figure it is, if you hate that one, you might not hate the next one. Um, this is about the modern disease, and it is a disease of people wanting other people to think they're important and famous. Didn't that when I was young, or, or whatever. It's obvious to him and me, it's famous that you want to be. No great shapes artistically, just pointed at by strangers. Of talent, merit, worthy life, your virtue is not born of strife. You piggybacked your current wife, a stolen dog in manger. And in the end, you'll get your day and passers-by will point and, hey, he used to be someone, they'll say. But remembered, there's no danger. <laughs> I do not want to die an old man's death. I want to die alive. The only fear I want to feel is the one on the thrill of the ride. Let me die before I fail, even if I don't succeed. Allow me grace and freedom from unpleasantness and need. Do not think of me when I stop. I'm gone and won't come back. There's nothing left and no one here once I'm dead. That's the fact. Do it now while I'm alive. Hate me, love me, cry. Kiss my hand, spit in my eye. Fight to me, sing to me, tell me your lies. You cannot do that when I've died. So do whatever now. There are no returns or refunds made. Don't say you didn't try. 
Mm. Do you remember being at school and uh, really being into, you know, <laughs> finger painting or, you know, do you remember being at school? Do you, do you, remember, do you know? There's a man who doesn't know who he is. Uh, do you remember, like, you know, really into painting or drawing or model making? And, you know, you, you get that little hint of dissuasion, probably from a teacher, almost certainly single, um, who kind of puts you off doing it. And you think, well, I won't do that anymore then. But you really, really enjoy doing it. And if you're really lucky, you get to come back to it later on in life. This is for you. I am not a painter. A real painter, said I ain't. My technique is not so refined, yet all the same, I paint. I am not a writer. A real writer told me that, but I put down so many words, they come to me like chat. I am not a dancer. A real dancer mocked my pose, but I move to the rhythm though and feel it in my toes. I am not an artist. A real artist makes real art. It's not for me to self-label and put horse before the cart. I am not a poet. A poet told me so. I do not have a self-published book coming out and my poems rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I am though quite contented, because I do not give a jot. I scribble like a man demented, and that, my friends, you lot. <laughs> Possibly the single biggest problem of, of, of being a poet uh, after learning to not flinch when people go, oh Christ, it's a poet, let's go to the other one, um, is everybody, especially girls, think you're writing about them. Let me make this clear, I do not write about real people. If my life was actually like this, I would be in care. However, this one uh, was inspired by uh, a girlfriend. Um, it's called Port Pie Penny, um, but as she dumped me, her real name is Pauly. <laughs> Let me rhyme you about Port Pie Penny. She's a girl who likes her meat, but insists that these are her salad days and the pastry's just a treat. Some people think that she's quite mad. They say she's way past barking. They're right, she comes from Upminster. Her sense of humour sparkling. It's not all going for Port Pie Penny. Sometimes she's soporific. It doesn't matter, she'll wake up and return to being terrific. On just four coffees, pork pie penny is everybody's tonic, but it must be said that her laughs are snorts, which makes that pork pie quite ironic. <laughs> it was very hot last summer, for two days, and I wrote my poem about that. It's called The Day My Vans Went Mad. I know I'm wearing Birkenstocks, but you know, use your imagination. <laughs> I was ankle deep in molten rubber, my shoes had melted away. My armpit started growing plants and it hadn't reached midday. The day the earth caught fire, the Thames was a cloud of steam, and underfoot the world got mad, my dog was dancing tap. My Solero's just an orange drip, my Magnum's a brown glove. My funny feet's not made my lips, my 99's a 10, my love. <laughs> Slip, slap, slop isn't just a dating cry, but a call to all to take good care, a reminder not to fry. The swimming pools are boiling soup, the fountain's just to spray. To cry, it's the end of days, calls out a fool, but it feels like it today. In years to come, we might recall how we used to complain about the cold and wear a jumper and think that that was insane. Now all we do is boil and rage, at least when we have the chance, if not to stop, at least adapt and enjoy one last dance. My biggest fan is no use at all, the man just blows hot air. All the puff of limp beach, limp beach balls and all we do is stare. It's all the fault of someone else or maybe just bad luck. Sunspots, diesel, climate change or Brexit. I'm blaming Brexit, why not? Everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody been um, shamed for you know your lifestyle choices? Yeah. Yeah, I feel your pain, mate. Yeah, I, was, I was shamed the other day. You can't eat that. <laughs> Not one, but two women begged. You really are a lucky dog, a male friend said. Hash brown, scrambled eggs, sausage and baked beans. Pop it in the microwave, it's the meal of dreams. The women saw it differently. It's not fit for the drain. You really mustn't eat that. I'd been all day breakfast shamed. <laughs> I met with you this afternoon ostensibly to see 
How you are doing? How is your life? Are you unhappier than me? I thought that you had much the same in mind. My disappointment with life's cards were what you hoped to find. It's why we fools use socials. To satisfy us that, compared to us, it's not so good and on you fate has shat. I was let down. You're doing great and joy filled every word. You wished me well and buoyed me up. It's a wonderful, wonderful world. Mm. Anybody here from Broadstairs? Wait, there's a small one. Well, okay, so this is going to be largely meaningless. Um, um, but hey, if it's a poem, you should better resonate with it. This is about a, a, a figure, a, a character lives in town. Um, and I was just moved to write about her one day. She might not even be five feet tall. But if I'm really honest, I'm afraid that that is all I know about her. She wears her winter coat all year round. And smiles the way your granny would if she was still around. She always takes the same route home. Every day alone. Her shopping bag is not quite full. I don't know how she pays. Her secrets stay that way. But if she spoke, I'm sure I'll see. She's lived far more than me. <laughs> Never been appreciated by a frog. <laughs> or possibly a toad before. That's special. There you go. I mean, I've been heckled, but never by an amphibian. That's, that's, a, that's on the life achievements box. Um, okay, there are, uh, how, many, how many classes are there? Wrong? There are two. There's those who own capital, and there's the rest of us. Anybody who thinks they're middle class or upper middle class is delusional. You just paid a bit more, and you will be dumped on at some point. This is about, the, uh, this is about class war. You know, just because it's a Monday. In days of old, the wealthy placed their mediocre children in India or Africa to exercise dominion. With empire gone, Odeon too, they hustled into places like media, arts and rock and roll and pushed out common faces. They'll never embrace labour though, it's far too far for posh folk who think that they're placed one up, their asses, that's for sure. In days to come it's artisans they'll be because by then AI will have replaced the last consultancies while we all sit by the roaring of the sea. Okay. Embarrassing true story. Um, we don't get letters anymore, so when you get an official letter, especially one in a rigid envelope, it catches your attention. And uh, I got one, and I opened it, and it was a certificate. It was a qualification in dementia studies, right? which I'd forgotten do it. <laughs> this is about dementia. Of all the stuff I have forgotten, some details never escape me. The last to leave, the air I breathe, our senses held in common. The scent of you, of morning dew, and love in laundered cotton. What sun remains through fevered fog dances through my eyes. I am not gone, just cannot find the lyrics to my song. Please know that you can only guess at what I still retain. And if I rail against the world, it's never you I blame. For at the heart of all I am, I'm pretty much the same. Would you like a, would you like a proper sonnet? A love sonnet, a real sonnet. You know, you know that um, poems have structure as well, I've been told. No, I'm kidding. Um, let me do a sonnet for you, Sorry. and um, just in the mood for it. I do love you. I do not have more words. We are as one when in a quiet moment that reaches in to where I'm less absurd. I do not know how to be more potent. In touch, return to when we first it knew there was no one who meant more in the world than me to them, now I to you, all true. Wrapped in arms, we stood, stand, curl tight, secure. Same as the child naive, I'm innocent. They loved your bones and flesh and hair and breath. Now float and spin, we are not limerent. This state is ours until its day of death. You are in my heart, I'm in pulse deep. Forever swear our bond until dark sleep. Yes. Right. And Robert.
probably finally. Any uh, any psychotherapists in? Um, really? Fantastic. This this is for you because you'll get this. I did this poem in Whitstable uh, a few months ago, and I said, "Any psychotherapists in?" Boom! I nearly got knocked out by the wave. <laughs> Just pretty much everybody in the audience put their hand up. Um, anybody got an experience of psychotherapy? There's no shame, it's just like going to the podiatrist, except without your feet being involved, normally. No? Okay, well, if, you can pretend you haven't, but I know you have. Um, so this is called, um, We Always Hurt the Ones We Love, especially for you. We always hurt the ones we love. They're closest to our truth. Primed and yet quite unprepared to be the one that soothes out comes our worst in tantrums, rants and moody sulks. You just don't understand and I don't see results. Perhaps secure in all but love unseen, they make a scene. Achievements count for nothing when you're stuck at age 15. Every day's a groundhog day, relief or analgesic. A rictus grin, another gin, your pain's encyclopedic. Does it sound like you? You're halfway there. Please carry on your digging. You'll find a corpse. It's yours, of course. It's only just beginning. Until then, your ghosts will drag their chains around and moan. We're at a breakthrough, you and me. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> now, um... <clears throat> Come to me, my children. I welcome all four legs as well. Um, we're in the chapel. It's deconsecrated, apparently. Um, well, I don't know, actually. I'm assuming it's deconsecrated. Um, I wrote a poem uh, about a year ago, which unfortunately has become, you know, that conversation we had earlier on with Mel, talking about, you know, this pop stars always go, oh, I wish I hadn't done that one song. Oh, everybody wants me to play that one song. Oh, I hate that one song. They say, yeah, but it made you a million. They go, yeah, but I hate that one song. I don't see with my heart. Well, this is mine. It's exactly the same, except for the millions. <laughs> so, um, uh, so this is, uh, uh, this is unusual because, uh, there's, you can't really invite people to join in with original poetry because, you know, what are you, telepaths? <laughs> well, just some drunks do, but uh, normally it doesn't work. However, with this one, you do know the words, you do know the rhythm. It just won't work, though, so, so don't join in, just savour it. Um, this is especially for anybody who's travelled to Broadstairs today um, on the St Pancras line, on High Speed One. This is called the St Pancras Prayer, new Thanet Parkway version. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit of drama now, I'll get into character, here we go. Let us begin with thoughts for Ashford, and for Canterbury West, and for stations on the Dover branch, and all the stops in between, especially plucky little Sturry. From Stratford International, to travel through Herne Bay, I speed, fear Faversham, be thy name. Thy Raynham come, strewed will be done, in Chatham as it is in Rochester. <laughs> give us this day our sitting born, and forgive us our Westgate, as we forgive those who Birchington on sea against us. <laughs> and lead us not into Ebbsfleet, <laughs> but deliver us from Margate. <laughs> For thine is the bubble, the Chessfield and Swellcliff, and Gillingham. For Ramsgate, Dumpton, and Broadstairs. Gravesend. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. So, my name, uh, thank, you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, my name is Nick Goodall. Uh, I'm the bard of Broadstairs.com, uh, although I'm thinking of changing it to Ocado just to get more visitors. Um, uh, so, uh, and I post a new poem on Facebook every two days, so if you liked any of this stuff, uh, you might like some of those, and there's tons of it available to watch the videos of, including this one, with the heckle from the frog, which is going to be a, uh, which is how I'll always think of today. How did today go, dear? Oh, I think I got heckled by a frog. So, thank you for joining in. Um, we're only at the beginning of the week, it's going to be a fantastic week in town, and if you really like this, I'm back on tomorrow at 3 o'clock and I'll do some new ones for you. Thank you ever so much for coming out. Yay!